everybody. It's Michelle Lavore and Devin Lavore coming, coming at, at you. So um, today we're just going to share some of what we got actually during our God time. So and we knew as soon as we got, I was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what we need to share. Yeah. And Michelle was like, yep, it is. Yes. <laughs> so um, Joa was actually leading God time today. And so we hey, got Joa. to uh, listen to Superbook. That's kind of their thing when they get to lead. They're yes. like, we get to watch Superbook. So it was a very familiar story. We were listening um, and watching uh, David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. But it's so cool. God is awesome because seriously, we've seen this how many times i don't know Probably too many to count 15 and <laughs> <laughs> and yet god still kind of gave us something new a different way of looking at it and so as we were watching it got to the point where um why don't you say what you got out of it Cause well you mean when david went to fight the um yeah fight goliath yeah oh yeah well i was thinking it just dawned on me like wow okay little david Nobody from nowhere, not even not even acknowledged by his brothers or his father as being worthy of the anointing that Samuel, that God was using Samuel to anoint. It's like, well, it can't be, I don't know, you must be at the wrong house. You can't be anointing him. He's out in the field protecting the sheep, mm -hmm. protecting the sheep, and he's protected them from lions and bears all the time. That's just what he does. And, um, and then I got this parallel, like, wow. <laughs> this is crazy because here he is going to, and for some people we're like, oh yeah, I knew that a long time ago. For me, it's revelation. <laughs> but he's going out to protect the sheep, the nation of Israel, from the lion and the bear, Goliath. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was just like, this is like old hat for him. Like he yeah. can do this. He can actually do it. But it was almost like, but he's got a track record. You know, we were talking about track record mm -hmm. before we started this video. He's got a track record of the faithfulness of God. He's got a track record of the victory of God over these kinds of things. It doesn't matter that he's not an actual lion and a bear. He represents that. Yeah. And it's like the nation of Israel represents the flock of God. And he was just anointed to be king over that flock. So it just, it just, it was like yeah. a great parallel to me. I was like, wow. Yeah. Look at that. And even when he went off into the wilderness, yeah. you know, he was still in this position where he was exercising authority over people and mm -hmm. stuff. So just seeing the parallel and um, and then you started talking about yeah, and the uh, other things that you were seeing from that. <laughs> well, and um, so I was just like, wow, this is so true. And even with um, Joseph and his life uh -huh. from from when he was. A young boy he was kind of an overseer mm -hmm. um, that's why he was you know told to go out and see how his brothers were doing in the field and and then when he gets sold into slavery he becomes the overseer at Potiphar's house when even when he's in jail he becomes an overseer in jail and so <laughs> it's like then then when he is put in the position when he is lifted up he's already done the I mean he's it's he's familiar. It's not like whoa yeah. I've I've never done this before. I have no idea what I'm doing. It's like <laughs> God has actually prepared him the whole time to do what it is he's been called to do. And so yep. then it was just kind of for us that I was just like, All right, you know, like Lord, that is so true. You do that in our lives. You mm -hmm. prepare us. There are certain things and, and this is really where maybe like for you, I would just challenge you, and it's something that we're we're probably going to do maybe tonight once kids are in bed and there's no distractions. Yeah. <laughs> of um, really just looking at your own life and just asking the Lord to kind of show and reveal play, the places where He has um, been working in you, where it's very much like, oh, this is this is a sign of where God has you going. And mm -hmm. what God has you doing, and um, some of it can be like really simple and easy. It's like maybe you've loved music your entire life, and you're great at, you know, playing an instrument or something. And it's like, okay, God can very well be taking you in that direction to use that gift, that talent. Um, but you know, you never know what it's going to be, and it can be something from since you were little. I think it could be something from the time you've gotten saved, and um, oh, I just like writing stories. Yeah, they're just stories. That's all. 
really That's awesome true. sci-fi <laughs> idea story since I was seven, but it's not God's calling on my life. Why would that be? I really love it, but no. <laughs> true. I actually totally. Well, there's one for me. <laughs> but um so that's just kind of what I was gathering and just like <clears throat> I feel like God's just kind of re- you know, this whole week has been really fine tuning and saying like, "Hey, you know, look at what I've called you to. Look at the vision. What are your heart's desires?" Um the last couple times have really been heart's desires as far as just like just desires two suvs and 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 mm-hmm. and um and just then but then like our a desire for where god has us in, um working and moving and it's not going to be inside the church walls does not mean that we aren't going to be working with churches oh, well, or anything like that because be. that's really what absolutely. we are called to do yeah um is is to um just be be um be a light be a light within the church (laughs) um you know god really has um kind of shown us many times of how it's like we really have come from like if we were in a tribe we would be from the tribe of levi and um and just working because they worked in the house of the lord Mm -hmm. um and how um we've seen a lot with just the gatekeepers and there's just so much that god's shown us um that that is where he's like similarities similarities yeah really in christ we're all one tribe but god can use the old testament stuff to kind of like help you understand who you are and how he's going to use you and all that stuff yeah so we're um, all a royal priesthood now we are we we are and we (laughs) all jesus is the high priest (laughs) yeah and we really are all um you know, before the throne of God. We're all one flock. Mm-hmm. We're all one group of sheep. Yep. You know, um, Jesus is the chief shepherd. You know, there. God doesn't, yeah, we'll just go there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just stop there, Devin. <laughs> Jesus is the chief shepherd. But I would just encourage you even, you know, maybe set some time aside to just look at how God has has made you and fashioned Mm -hmm. you and like what kind of places have you been put in authority in before and because that could be a definite um definitely a place where god might be taking you and using you in the future Mm -hmm. and this for us for me anyway this i'm pretty sure for you as well it's not the first time we have done something like this as far as looking back but it's like i feel like it'd be a good idea right now at this point point of our lives to just kind of look back and refresh this seems to be like a refresh week yeah so far you know it really has i was like anyway It's like a refreshing of things. It's like the Lord told me today, you know, have faith, have great faith. And I was reminded, I was like, oh my gosh, you told me that like eight, nine months ago mm-hmm. when I was really strongly doubting something. He was just like, no, have faith, have great faith. And, um, but the benefit, uh, we'll get to that in a second, but the benefit of doing this kind of looking back in your life, it really is a great encouragement to see like, wow, this is who God has made me to be. And what it should do is it should help you to see two things. One, that, um, everything that you've been going through is adding to the vision, Yeah. you know, and that, um, well, I guess it's really just one thing. And that everything you've been going through is adding to the vision and it, sh- it should be confirming the vision that God's given you. It should be confirming like, I mean, looking at Joseph's life, he was always in charge. Mm-hmm. His, you know, Jacob did not send him to see what his brothers were doing because he just happened to be available. No, no he sent him because he trusted him. He's like, he's going to do a good job. He's going to be a faithful servant. He's going to bring me a, pr- a proper report. He's going to do good. He's excellent at that. Mm-hmm. You know, and and then other people who didn't know him from Adam said, wow, look at this guy. Let's put him in charge because he's good at what he mm-hmm. does. Mm-hmm. And um, and then you look at David's life. He was just from, from before he was before uh, Goliath. He was taking care of sheep. He was in charge. He was pastoring. He was he was doing then what he would do way later in the future. Mm-hmm. And throughout all of his trials and tribulations and tests, he was still doing the thing God called him to do. Mm-hmm. Even a week before he was elevated, he was doing the thing that he was called to do, yeah. which was kick butt and take names, basically, is what he was doing. <laughs> 
Why? For the purpose of establishing righteousness and justice and expanding the kingdom. That Goliath experience was just the beginning of many destroyed enemies that would just, he would walk on, you know what I mean? He would mm -hmm. just, he would conquer so many things to expand the kingdom. And then what was the end result of that? Or what was the next generation result of that? Is that his next generation would not even know war. Solomon never knew war, ever. Mm -mm. And he, he had a ton peace. of money. It was like, no war, ton of money. No wonder he had so many hobbies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was like the easiest kingship in history. You know what I mean? For real. Because someone had already pioneered and laid the way or, or mm -hmm. paved the way, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and I just feel like that's what we're doing. I feel like that's a lot of what you guys are in a position to do, which is why it's so confusing and the timing of God and what's going on and why is this like this? And Because God's been preparing you the whole time. Yeah. You're, you're probably doing the very thing that God is going to have you do. You're doing it in some sort of capacity, yeah. some sort of way, some sort of something, however. Yeah. And that's why it's a good encouragement and a challenge to kind of just look at your past life, look at what's going on now, and what are the common denominators? What are the yeah. things that just keep popping up? Throughout my life, writing has always popped up. Music, I've always been doing music, like my whole life. Even when I was a kid, my mom was like, oh, you'd always just bring out the, the pots and the pans and a couple glasses, and you just start whacking away on them. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you'd be there for hours just yeah. doing that. I'm just like... Even as, you know, so, so I'm saying, like, even even our kids, you know, God told us what our kids were going to be like before they were born. Mm -hmm. And then they're born and they grow, start growing up and it's like, yep, God, you were right. No, <laughs> it's not that it was God right. It's just, did you hear from God, mm -hmm. you know? And something else that kind of stuck out to me when we were doing this story was just that um, David had been anointed by Saul to do the very by work. Samuel. I mean, Samuel. <laughs> Saul has no anointing. <laughs> no. He, he got his anointing taken. taken. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I think there's a, just a significance that he was anointed, and then later on he oh, goes and yeah. he fights Goliath. Yeah. And um, it was like he had the anointing of the Lord with him. And because of that, he had great faith to defeat this giant. Mm -hmm. And I really believe, like, God, he has, he had, for those of us, like, when you have the anointing, it can stir up and rise up great faith mm. for you to conquer the giants in those areas. Um, yeah. and, and it can be, I mean, in so many different areas, but if you take, you know, for us, we really believe that God has, you know, given, given us the area of Nashville, like the geographical area. Yeah. And it's like, we have to, God is going to, he, is gonna uh, because he's anointed us then we will have the faith to rise up and believe for the things that god is going to speak over over um yeah. nashville and yeah. for us to believe mm -hmm. and um and other people might be like that's just that's crazy i mean honestly even what we are believing for now it's like it's like all right you know but this truly it's just the beginning and and i think even for david like that was just the beginning i mean it's it's a huge story but his entire life his entire journey was one of believing in the lord and having faith for mm -hmm. the things that he had declared over his life and see and that's the key right there the yeah. things that god had declared mm -hmm. you're not just stepping out and declaring in faith blah 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 something that god hasn't said yeah that's not faith that's presumption you know mm -hmm. And on a, on a real note, that's really what I was uh, concerned about this morning because we were having prayer and I was just like, you know what, Lord, I'm just going to be totally honest with you because I can't pretend with you. Um, the things that we are praying for, some of the things that we're praying for, I still have doubts and I'm sorry, but listen, let's just, me and you just talk about it right now, please, because I, I'm, I, you know the truth, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, like I'm, I'm, this doubt keeps talking to me and I'm just like, no, no doubt. I don't, I don't believe you. Hmm. Hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm considering like, oh my gosh. And I'm just like, Lord, I'm just to be totally honest with you. It's like, I really, these are some crazy, awesome things. And it's like, some people would say we're crazy. Some people would say we're, we're believing for a fantasy or whatever. I don't care about any of that stuff. I want to know what you're saying so that in my heart, I can believe because you said, if you believe in your heart and not doubt, 
And you, that's a principle. And you've said it many times in scripture, believe in your heart and not doubt. And then we have it now as our present possession, even though we don't see it, you know, um, faith perceiving as reality, that which is not perceived by the senses. That's an amplified version right there. But, <laughs> but it's like, what is that? Uh, Hebrews 11, one, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and so I'm just like, Lord, this is where I'm at. Cause I, I don't want to have the doubt be the leaven in there. And then for whatever reason that messes up the promise or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, I'm like, Lord, I just need, I just need to know once again, I need some encouragement or something, you know? And I'm just, this is all just in my head going on in my head. And the Lord was like, oh, or actually a couple minutes went by a couple people had already prayed. A couple of the kids had already prayed. And I just, I had given that to the Lord. I'm like, all right. And then the Lord just comes in. It's just about ready to be my turn to pray. And the Lord just says so clearly to me, have faith, Devin. Have great faith. And then I was like, yeah, okay. And then it was like, it took me to a whole nother level of like, whoa, yeah. I remember you told me that before. So once again, it shows that even if we break down and we don't believe or we're struggling to believe and it's like, Lord, help my unbelief and all that stuff. It's the greatest opportunity for God to either say, you know what? No, that is not me or yes, or to lift you up. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it gives all the glory to God in that yeah. situation because it's, it is totally him that sustained yeah. me. Yeah. Because I was going under. I was just like, man, I, I can't, I can't hold this. And God's like, you're right. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> let me help you and if god's helping you to hold something up then you know if sometimes the only aaron and her you're going to have on your side is both hands of the lord yeah. you're not going to have people you're just not you know it's going to be him and him alone holding you up and yeah. it's like when you feel that when you just get that when you that it's not a feeling it's the knowing it's that pr the reality of mm -hmm. god himself holding you up saying i got you yes believe i don't care if the whole world says no and i'm saying yes and i'm saying yes and you can believe what i'm saying because it only matters what i say yeah. and that's kind of why i was coming to him i was like this you're the only one that matters please tell me what's going on because i am not really interested in fantasy yeah. i never have been ever mm -hmm. ever ever it's like i just want to know the truth and sure enough this morning he was like not only have faith have great, great faith. faith. And then I researched great faith. I was like, well, where's great faith in the scripture? It's only said twice. Mm -hmm. And that was to the centurion who wanted his servant healed, who a servant who was like a son to him. Yeah. It was very important. Now, now notice the, the, uh, the dynamic here. This servant who was like a son to him. So that's where the centurion's heart was. He was like, oh, it's a deep, deep desire that I have. A deep one. Maybe not much deeper. Because he might not have even had any kids. Because yeah. he might have given his life to uh, the career of being a Roman yeah. soldier. He might not have a wife and kids. So this servant of his is like a son to him. And and he's like, Lord, you don't need to come. Just speak the word. And I know he'll be healed. I know I know what it's like to be under authority. And I've seen how you operate. It's a, by authority. So if you, And he's like, wow, your faith is great. It's a different Greek word. That's one particular Greek word that he uses there for great. And then there's a Syrophoenician woman who had a daughter. Hello, a daughter um, who was uh, possessed by a demon, basically. And, you know, Jesus didn't do the charismatic, you know, thing he just said oh man great is your faith because he kept rejecting her remember he kept rejecting mm -hmm. her a couple times and it was like wow your faith is great and for that word he used the word mega like mm -hmm. your faith is mega like man go ahead you whatever you got it whatever you wanted you I, you got it i was going to give it to you anyway but i just wanted to stretch your faith a little bit oh that's a word right there for somebody <laughs> just wanted to stretch your faith a little bit but it's like, boom, it's like, you got it. And it was like, from that hour, boom, the demon went out of her. Mm -hmm. You know, and now both of these examples are deep desires from relational connection. Yeah. You know, so the things that we're believing for, and those are the only two times a great faith was used. And it came out of the mouth of Jesus both times. Mm -hmm. He said, great is your faith. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Mm -mm -mm. Anyway, so what we're believing for is a deep, deep desire on that level. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of times we feel like the Syrophoenician woman where yeah. God keeps saying, ah, no, 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 nope, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. 
nope, that timing's wrong too. Nope, that timing's wrong too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just like, oh my gosh. But then we keep coming and we bow ourselves at his feet and yeah. we worship. And we just go, Lord, mm-hmm. you're good. You done already died for us. You've already given us the greatest gift ever. So let's keep that in mind. You know what I mean? And it's like you start getting that eternal perspective and you just, the worship becomes real. Yeah. And it's just like, Lord, you're good. And then you make that request. It's like God just comes along and just like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. I love you. Uh, You know (laughs) know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. God can't help but love because he is love. Yeah. You know? So it's like whatever you're believing for whatever you're just keep going after him keep praying keep i'd encourage you guys to read that word that lana vosser came out with just what yesterday or the day before or something something like like that that. uh about like you know how the enemy's been attacking but it's like you're on the verge of the greatest adventures uh of your life in christ yet and it was just really good and she talked about surprises the, yeah. She said, the Lord prophesied. She's like, he was like, I have many divine surprises for you. I was like, thank you, Jesus, for the confirmation. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that like seriously blessed me. I was like, whoa, yeah. many divine surprises. Said it right there. Yeah. And I'm actually, not really feeling the many surprises right now this week. And it's Wednesday. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't care. I've been here before. You yeah. Know? <laughs> it's like, God, you're going to do what you're going to do. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, um. Yeah, and actually at the end of that word, it was talking about how, like, the wind of the Spirit will, <gasps> will come up under your wings. Oh, my. And. That that could be a whole nother video. Let's do it. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, but it just, it was just, it just reminded me once again of the picture of all of us standing before the doors. And we mm-hmm. all had wings. And that was all, and again, that's speaking to the anointing that God has given us. Yeah. And. And it was just like, I was like, oh my goodness, yes, this, the wind coming in of the spirit that blows open the doors, it's going to rise and pick us up. Mm -hmm. It's going to lift up Mm -hmm. everyone because we have our, we had our wings out and we were all interlocked and we were all touching. In the spirit. In the spirit. We don't have to be going to the same church. No. We're just interlocked, connected in the spirit because we're connected to the same God. You know, it's a relational connection. Yeah, and so it was just like, yes, that's it. You know, like it's going to be lifting our wings up, lifting us up and mm-hmm. and carrying us to the place that God has for us and putting us yeah. at the seat at the table. Yeah, it was awesome. Him. And so it was, was just like, wow. really cool um, that I was reminded of that because I was like, oh, yeah, I totally had forgotten in that moment about the whole, you know, we all had wings and they were all... Um, Inter interlocked and mm-hmm. so it was just really cool and this is why you have to trust in the lord yeah because no matter how great a particular moment in your life is you move on past that and then months and months and months go yeah. by maybe even years and you forget about stuff but god doesn't yeah you know and it's like the jesus said the holy spirit will come and he will remind you of everything that i have said mm-hmm. and that's the things that he has said to you like 10 years ago five years ago eight, nine, ten months ago, you know, yeah. he will remind you. And when that, that's a great thing, man. I really want you guys to re- recognize this. That is an amazing thing. It is an amazing thing to forget what God has said to you. Why? Because when he brings it back up again, you will be so like bolstered in your faith, like uh, uh, reinforced in your mm-hmm. faith. Like, wow, that really is the Lord. Look at him. Mm-hmm. Look at him bringing that back to the forefront. And it just causes you to have great faith. Yeah. Or maybe before you were struggling just to have minor faith. Mm-hmm. But when you forget about it, okay, well, it didn't happen. But, but then he comes back up again and say, hey, the promise is real. Come on, let's believe it. It's just like, wow. It's like, and yeah, there is a timing issue that we can struggle with, you yeah. know, that both of us had to overcome today. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, you know, I did my McLaren overcoming. She did her VW Beetle overcoming, but we got there. Yeah. We got to the finish line called overcome. Yeah. You know, it's just like, God, what you do whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, whenever you want to do it, because you're trustworthy, you're awesome, and you're a whole list of things that I could say about you that are all good and all true and that's why we trust you so whatever and we're just going to continue to listen to what you're saying continue to follow wherever your spirit leads and you will decide when how who all the seven questions yeah you know you're going to decide all that and when it all comes to pass as it's coming to pass after it comes to pass it's all going to be good yeah because for six days you created and you looked at it and was like it is good 
Yeah. You know? So you're looking. God's looking at your life right now. Can I prophesy for a second? Uh, yeah. God's looking at your life right now, and he's saying it is good. Now, it may not feel good to us, and it may be like, oh, gosh, heart sickness. Um, That's not good. It actually is. You know? Psalm 33, 22 says, Lord... Reward us and recompense us and have mercy upon us in proportion to our waiting. So it's like an investment. You can put your investment in and then cash it out after a year. And you know, you get some money. Or you can put your investment in and cash it out after 25 years. How much are you going to get? You're set for life. Mm -hmm. You're set for the rest of your life. And then you can reinvest and be have your kids set for the rest of their life. And then they can reinvest and have their kids set for the rest of their life. See, that's that's how, what Dave Ramsey calls changing your family tree. Mm -hmm. If you live like no one else, you will later on live like no one else. And every time someone inherited a promise, they lived almost twice as long as they waited. Mm -hmm. Sometimes longer than that. Now, Abraham, he waited a long time. You know, my life has been compared to Abraham a lot, but I know I got a lot of years in that Abrahamic vision. <laughs> so I got to be much closer than I was a year ago. So, <laughs> But I just want to just encourage you guys. It's like God is able to encourage you. God is able to get you there. He is faithful. He is trustworthy. Everything about him is worth the praise and the worship and the everything, you know? And so... <clears throat> So we just want to encourage you guys with that, yeah. right? That to have faith, have great faith, knowing that everything that has been going on in your life from the time you were little, even till now, God can use and is using and will use to, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, put you in the place yeah. that he wants you to be in to expand and affect his kingdom. You know, his kingdom, which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So the gospel of Jesus, really the gospel of the kingdom, you know? Yeah. And it really so, is like, <clears throat> I, like Devin just said, with the timing issue, it's, it hit me pretty Baby hard. Sleeping. Definitely <laughs> very hard today. Yeah. Um, because, you know, it's like, all right, Lord, what is going on? And then, um, because it's, it's hard because you wake up and you feel like I have no direction today. What's yeah. going on? Why, why are we just, we're living a groundhog day. Well, and then, and then I think for me, really what got it was just like, oh, we're seeing more timing videos. And I'm just like, Lord, is this code? <laughs> are you basically like, I'm showing you this so that I'm preparing you so well, that you can yeah. be okay with it taking a long time? Well, because I have, I've been seeing, there's a, there's a <laughs> lot of, of like three videos, I think in the last 12 hours. Mm -hmm. have popped up talked about the t timing of the lord on my recommendations it's like mm -hmm. ooh, the timing of the lord timing and then john finn just came out with a video today about why you can't swat a fly or why it's hard to swat a fly and the timing of the lord i would imagine trying to pinpoint the timing of the lord is like swatting a fly that's yeah. probably what he's yeah. probably gonna say but i'm just like wow he keeps telling me about the timing i'm just like okay uh i haven't delved into it yet but yeah so <laughs> it just it just hit me right away. Start making the faulty connections. Like, yeah. <laughs> it all is negative. Yeah. Always. It's like don't yeah. do that. It's like no, don't do it. <laughs> Unplug all you're, those connections. You're, you're getting swallowed. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you're going back into the matrix. Unplug. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> and um, yeah, and so, but it, I just think though, it's like we just have to. We really do just have to trust the Lord and when it comes to the timing because I believe just you know what He is doing. Um, there, there is God's perfect timing to it. He's not going to have us um, in a particular place forever. He just isn't. Um, that's not how God works and moves. And um, because He is always moving, He is. He always has His his plans and purposes moving forward and um and you know i just was just reminded again of you know for me the the um in 2008 when Devin and i met that that year it was really just i believe it just a god thing because literally in in january i think it was the january 1st or whatever right around there whatever Sunday, the first Sunday of January was that year, um, 
the church that I had been going to, the pastor was talking about, you know, pray for an impossible, something impossible you want to see the Lord do this year. An impossible prayer. So it had a time stamp on it. it and it did have a time stamp on it. But, and, and so I just, you know, it took me a while. I was like thinking through like, what's something that I just really, really want. And I was just like, Lord, I really just, I want to get married. This you know, year. This year. And that was a big step for you, that right? That was huge. Like, yeah. <laughs> at the time, I'd never dated ever. You know, <laughs> at the time, I had a hard time just even talking to guys, you know, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And and it was just like, okay, well, Lord, this is what I really want, though. I really want to get married. And um, it has gotten cloudy. It has, <laughs> a little dark. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> And so anyway, just like fast forward, come to June, there was no, there were no prospects. And I was just like, okay, well, Lord, how about just meet somebody this year? Maybe, maybe that will happen. Lowered the faith. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and I really didn't have like, I, I wasn't, it wasn't in a place of like great faith, but I, I was like, well, Lord, you could still have me meet somebody. That would be cool. And that'd be enough. Okay. And I because according to my own reasoning, there's no way I can meet someone this late in the year, year and get married. And get married, yeah. That's not going to happen. And um, so <laughs> come. <laughs> That's the Lord doing his maniacal laugh. <laughs> As he like, strokes oh, his Little did you beard. know. <laughs> and it really did. By by June, I, I, I was starting to just be like, okay, well, maybe I'll just meet somebody and that would be cool. Maybe get married the next year. Yeah. And, um, and then I got an email. June 14th of 2008 and then we met June 16th of that year and 2008 two days a couple days later because yeah. we set it up and we're like all right let's let's meet it was after work and like well you know the end right <laughs> we got married the rest but, is but his story yeah <laughs> and so you know I I knew that night I mean it was the best date Ever. We had so much fun and and it was just like, okay, like this is awesome. And I knew I was like, okay, I'm I'm gonna marry him. And then we started <laughs> <laughs> So then basically uh day nine of knowing each other, I was like, Hey, I just wanna let you know, uh pretty sure you're gonna be my husband. <laughs> Through Facebook message no less. Yep. Don't know why I did that, but yep. totally did that. So anyway, we started talking about getting married, and and for both of us, it was just like there We've was already a, a done sense, deal. There was a sense of the timing of the Lord, though, because we had talked about you know when when do we want to get married? We could you know wait maybe till two thousand. People were already calling us crazy. Yeah, and honestly, that kind of I don't know. It kind of prophesies our future mm -hmm. about like even how we met and how our relationship began. People on the outside and even people who are supposed to be close to her were saying oh now let's let's use all of our human logic and wisdom to show you that this is not a good relationship and it's like shut up <laughs> you, you're, you're obviously not hearing from the lord job's friends and uh you're wrong yeah. <laughs> but it was just like our whole to how we got brought together and then how our relationship began completely weird and different and unorthodox and out there yeah and it's been that way ever since yeah just how god's move through us has been like i am doing a new thing he was doing that 10 years ago and he's still doing it yeah you know and so you know as we were talking about it it was just very clear to us that it was like no it needs to be this year this we year. need to get married this year mm -hmm. and and so we did. Um, we basically were married six months and four days after we got met. Or after we got met. After we got met. Yeah. Met after life. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> after we Don't met. Fool us. And so, just as I'm here right now, I'm just, um, I'm reminded of that because there is a very specific timing of the Lord. A He's, tipping point breakthrough. Come and, on now. And He is not going to. He's not going to have us go past that. He's yeah. not. You know, his, his timing is is perfect, and um, I think that's really what the Lord was tr has been trying to say. Yeah, just feeling, just got my feelers out for what that means. What are you saying, Lord? Because if you want to go negative, well, then you have to go positive too. You can't go all negative. 
Mm -hmm. If you're going to use logic, well, then it's logical to use the positive, too. But we're not doing any of those. Yeah. The bottom line is like, Lord, what are you saying? See, that's yeah. above all that soulish stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just really feel like that's what the Lord's saying, why he's speaking and showing the time. He's like, my timing is perfect, and you're going to love it. You're going yeah. to love that yes. precise moment that things happen. It's good. You're going to see. You're going to look back even years later and go, wow, if it was me orchestrating it, I would have done it exactly the way you did it. Yeah. But because we're living through it, we're like, no, I, I wouldn't do it that way. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah. This is, this is, this is crazy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Even we're saying it's crazy and we're, we're living it, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, but. And so it's, yeah, it's just like the precision of the Lord is so perfect. Mm -hmm. And God is not late. That's something he spoke to me back when I was actually um, pregnant mm. with Eliah. Yeah. And it was past his due date. The first two I had actually came before their due dates, like a week and three weeks before. So I was expecting something like that. And. You know, Eliah was four days late. He was four days late. But God just kept telling me over and over and over again, I am not late. And, and you're like, he and is. I'm like, but he <laughs> is? What are you talking about? And, and again, though, it was just like, yeah, by man's standard, oh, come on you now. know, That's it. you might consider it late. But God's like, no, my day for him to be born is perfect. Mm -hmm. And so the day that God has declared for his promises to come to pass is perfect. He was born on a palindrome number. 712 um, 17. Yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah. That was a. Uh, I just. Isaiah. But. Um, Isaiah, yeah. Yeah. And, and honestly, it really helped me even with Isaiah because he was even more late than the others um, a week and a day. Um, and but it was just like no god is not late and and his nope. timing is is impeccable and i think we just have to rem rem remind ourselves of that mm -hmm. and and to like you know fly above like he said this the soul that's just like oh i'm so tired of waiting <laughs> and i just want why can't it be today i think today would be a good day because i've done that a lot i've trust me i've gone through the calendar bazillions of times and it's like oh well this would be 40 days after this thing and and or this or that and it's like uh you know what you just have to put that You're aside going through like 740s you, you really can't do that because <laughs> it just leads to discouragement really and all does. of that but it's like the timing of the lord is perfect trusting in and him. and it's just yeah. like all right lord whatever the timing is we know that we will greatly rejoice you know jesus when he came it was perfectly placed when when Jesus returns again, it is going to be perfectly placed. And I think too, like God was reminding me when I was just kind of going through everything that there is, it's like, do we want God to harvest early or do we want him to wait for the full harvest to be able to come in? The right time. And yeah. it's like, well, Lord, I, we want to get the fullness of it. We don't want to just get part of something because we're impatient. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Lord, I want the fullness of you. I want the fullness. Let let your glory shine in all of its capacity. Mm -hmm. And if that re requires more waiting, then so be it. Yeah. And um, because in the end, you really will be glad you waited. Yeah. You will be glad you it happened whenever God decides that this is the moment for it to happen. You'll be glad. Yeah. yeah. It'll be the best thing, you know. Yeah. So I know this video is kind of a. Stop Stop apologizing for that. Just just stop. Okay. I'm not apologizing for the length or that it was a hodgepodge. That's the, we're apologizing for nothing. <laughs> Glory to God. Yes. But um, I, just, I just hope that you guys are encouraged by this. Um, and just on a side note, um, we love seeing all of your guys' comments. Um, mm -hmm. Lately, we haven't really been able to get... We do read them. Sometimes we yeah. just we don't have the time to go through and make comments, comments on like everything. We used to. It's just um, becoming too much. It's yeah. Becoming too. Like, but we just we it's do. It's like becoming a part time job. Yeah. Just doing comments. <laughs> but we do <laughs> and just emails and love stuff. and appreciate everything that you guys have to say. And mm -hmm. um, so just know that we do read it. Yeah. And um and we will try when we have the opportunities to get on there and actually write right back to you guys yep. um but just know that we are reading and we do see it and also um 
if any of you would like to help um, support our family, um, you can feel free to. We have a link down below, um, mm -hmm. link to our PayPal. Or on the front of our YouTube or, channel, yeah, which on is the, the donate here yeah. thing. That's um, and we works. so just appreciate um, all of you who have given to our family <sighs> yes. and who would even consider giving to overwhelmingly awesome. to us. And um, because we do, we, we just honestly, we have ongoing needs um, because we receive from people and then sometimes we don't get much and then we get more and, but it's just an ongoing thing. Um, yeah. But we just, God hasn't let us down yet. He has you not. Know, we, he just keeps using people to help us out man yeah i'm amazed yeah i'm like this is totally in the hand of the lord i can just sit back and chill and not stress out and get anxious yeah which is one of the things that god broke in us on friday night but mm -hmm. we should probably make a video about that at some point we someone should. was asking us to make a financial video and i was like we should we should make that because that really touches the spirit of it but maybe maybe not i don't know we'll yeah. see I said we'll put it in the inbox with God. Yeah. I'm like, hey, what about this? So, anyway, we just so appreciate you guys. Yeah. I just wish we could really, truly express how how much we appreciate yeah. all of you. And um, so, until next time, love you. We guys. will see you later. Love you. Bye. <laughs> My little uh, what is it? What's his name? <laughs> it's from uh, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Tyler yeah. Perry, Meet the Browns. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs>